Hey, y'all, as we uh, prepare to go, go live uh, on Facebook, hey, thank you for everyone who's sharing, sharing these messages. Uh, and please continue to share them. And we, we don't want to boast about numbers or anything, but, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot going on with that. So uh, I pray, I thank you for sharing them. And we're, we're having, you know, some, they're going over like 400 and stuff that are Man. 400 and something views. Man. So please continue to share those. And you can, you can go on Facebook yourself and just, just go to Grace Community Church Bartlett Road and click on share. That's all, that's all you got to do. And share it to your, your thing. But um, anyway, thank you so much for everyone who's joining us today and online and uh, through Facebook Live and here. We, uh, we are it's such privilege to worship and to be in the presence of the living God, our Father. Uh, he's so happy Father's Day to everybody. It's great being a father. There's nothing like being a father. And God, I think God wanted us to taste a little bit of the joy that he feels with his children. And that's, that's us, y'all. There's, there's nothing like being a father. And uh, we would all agree that family is, is one of the greatest blessings this side of heaven. You know, we all had imperfect fathers. And if we're a father, we're all imperfect fathers. But we have a perfect Father in heaven, and we can look to Him, and He can heal whatever's wrong with us, and, and whatever didn't get made right, and, and whatever needs to be uh, taken care of from here on out. You have a Father in heaven. You know, Jesus was the one who taught us to think of God as Father, more so than anybody else in Scripture, you know, way, 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 way more, Jesus came teaching that He's a Father. Almost most of the references to God that came out of Jesus' mouth were Father, re referencing Him as Father. And He taught us to pray, our Father in heaven. So He says, pray like that. So, our Father in heaven is, is what God's doing. He's bringing an eternal family together, y'all. That's what he's doing. He's gathering up a family. So we are starting a new series today called Born Free. And we're taking these cardinal hallmark doctrines of the faith. You know, the first, first thing people think of, doctrine, sounds boring. It's not. It affects your everyday life, and we're going to look at it together of how relevant and how they touch each and every part of our lives. So today we're looking at regeneration, being free from separation, separation from God and separation from God's family. So we're, we're looking at that today. And first of all, see, you are, you can, you are no longer separated from God and his family. So, number one, God is gathering up an eternal family. That's what God is doing right now. You know, it says in Hebrews 2.10, for whom and through whom everything was made, chose. It says God for whom and through whom. Think about that. It was for him and it was through him. And he made he chose to bring many children to glory. Now, God made everything, and he said it was good, but he's not through yet, y'all. He's not through with what he's building. He's not through with what he's making. He's building a family. He's assembling a family to be together forever, and he gave us a little taste of family here, but we're going to have a perfect family to spend forever with, and he wants you to be a part of of that family. And so he says that it's all made for him, it's all made by him, but he's still bringing a family together. And then in in uh Romans 8:15, I love this scripture. He says, "You received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children, and now we call him 
Abba, Father. And I'm, you may have heard that Abba is a term of endearment. It's a, it's a term of affection. And it was a way that every father wanted to hear their son or their daughter address them. It's a, it means closeness and emotional love. And God, he, he's telling us that now we come into the presence of God and we can address him as our Abba, our Father. You know what Jesus would have said, the word that he would have used when he was praying this right here, on, when he was hanging on the cross? In Luke 23, 34, he says, Father, forgive them. Because they do not know what they were doing. You know what he would have said? He was he, in the language of his day, in the common language, he would have said, Abba, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And so he has such, such tender love for us. And he wants us to think of God like that. As a tender, loving father. You know, God has gotten a bad rap. You know, he's not somebody up there looking to punish. He paid the ultimate price so that we're not punished. He's not interested in punishing people. He's interested in getting people out of that. But you've got to believe it. You've got to accept it. You've got to trust him with that. I, I heard this man right here on the screen giving a talk. The other day on the radio, his name is Ken Davis. He used to be a big, now he's old, older, he's, he's older now. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, he used to be given large, large gatherings like Promise Keepers. I don't know if you remember that or not, where 50,000 or more men would be gathered in a stadium. And this was a, quite of a movement. I attended several of them. And, and there were these great motivational talks of inspiring, inspiring men to be fathers and to step up to fatherhood and biblical fatherhood. And he was, he's really funny, by the way. But he was telling about this, and he was backstage with a bunch of national leaders, people who are all real well-known, and they were talking about what they were looking forward to in heaven. And he said to a man, all six of them, every one of them said they wanted to be able to go to heaven and crawl up in their father's lap like a little child and hear him say, it's all right now. Everything is okay. You know, and I thought about, you know, as he was telling that story, some quick thoughts flashed through my mind. What are these great leaders what, what would they want? You know, what would they be looking forward to? And I didn't realize that they have the same fears, the same insecurities, the same struggles that we all do. And they wanted to just crawl, be like a little child crawling up in his father's lap and hear him say, it's all over. It's all okay now. And see, are you listening to God? He's telling us that today. You know, he's telling you today that it's all right. Y'all, you, you don't have to worry. We don't have to look at what's going on outside and, and look at the evening news every day. In fact, I would suggest that you don't. But we don't have to let that stuff shape how we feel about this life, y'all. We've got a Father in heaven who's on his throne. He's watching over all of this. And he's telling us right now that it's going to be all right. He is, and I hope you can hear his voice. You know, for all we've been through, we, I mean, yes, it's, it's been a rough year, but y'all, it's, we've been through worse, and we'll get through this year, and we'll get through the other times. Number two, y'all, we must be born into God's family. You can, it's the only way you can get into God's family and, it, and Jesus said it like this to Nicodemus in John 3, 7. He said, don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. Y'all, being born again doesn't mean you become weird and obnoxious like I was and probably still am. 
You know, I was, I was talking, I would tell anybody who would listen, and I was bringing all my old druggy buddies and people to church, and, and I just wouldn't shut up, and people started telling me, you know, you, you won't shut up about this. You ought to be a preacher. And, and so I did, and I've been telling everybody since then. Who, whoever will listen, I hope you'll listen today. Y'all, you got to be born again. you got to be born into God's family. And... Y'all, it's the best thing ever. See, we are born dead spiritually. Y'all, our spirit is dead until we are born again spiritually. See, sin is a congenital disease that ever since those first ancestors of ours sinned, that brought spiritual death into the world. And it was passed through the human race. So it's been passed down to every single person who's ever lived. And we must be born again our spirit, for our spirit to come alive to God. And see, there, there are so many people now uh, that don't, really understand you know sometimes sometimes people uh think because they hang around church and they love the people and and that's good y'all and the people love them and all of that is good and they take part in the activities and things but y'all that doesn't mean you've been born again because you've joined a church or because you've been baptized or something like that Y'all, all all those things are good, but they, it takes a new birth. Jesus said, you must be born again. You know, there's a young lady that Ann and I know that, uh, she's, she says she was a Christian, but now she has become an atheist. And we've been talking to her and talked to her uh, some. She's a very sweet person, a, a sweet person sweet person but I was thinking about that and you know she's married she has a beautiful little child and I was thinking how can you be an atheist now and the only thing is you know that that would be like if she and her husband got divorced which I don't think they ever would I mean you know if they did for her to leave that marriage and then not believe her husband exists anymore See, if you've been born again, you can't not believe that God is real. And there are lots of people, when you hear about these people, and there's not many, there's only a, a, just a very small handful who have gone public now that they're, they're not a believer anymore. And of course, if you watch that news, you'd think that it's every other one. You know, but, but it's only a handful of them who have renounced their faith and they don't believe anymore. Y'all, they, I, I have to believe that they weren't born again. Amen. Y'all, I've been born. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not the same person I was, Amen. thank God. God. Amen. Amen. Look, e- Ephesians 2, 4 and 5 says, But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love he had for us, made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in trespasses and sins. He says, you are saved by grace. Y'all, see, we, we, are, we are body, soul, and spirit. That spirit was dead. Jesus Christ comes into our life, and we are born again. And we're, now we are alive spiritually, he says. So, see, you can't make yourself born again this time any more than you could have the first time. You know, it's, it's something that God, by his grace, does in us. Y'all, but you got to be born by the Spirit of God. Jesus said, he, he described it as born from above. You know, you got to be born again. And look, he says in John, see, the, he gives us the power to change. Y'all, the reason why we're no longer the same is because he's, he has come and taken up residence in us. And now he's changing us. See, we're not trying to get good enough for God. We could never do that and still can't. But he's come within us and now he's changing us. He said, it's by grace you have been saved. It's all something that he's doing. Now, we cooperate with him, of course. You know, we're not robots. We believe, we trust him, 
But he's doing the work and we respond to that. Look in John 5, 24, this is good news. He says, very truly I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Y'all, is that not good news? Y'all, we will not be judged. He says there, there's no judgment waiting on us for sin. <clears throat> we're going to get an evaluation for how faithful we were, but, but the sin issue is settled. We're going to take a whole week and talk about that. Look, he said, look, he said, believes him who sent me. Now, people, uh, God said he sent his only son. See, he's spoken to us by sending his son. So he says, believe him. And a lot of people believe in God, and that's good. You know, but he said, believe him. Yes. Believe him. You know, uh, he's spoken a, a lot of different ways. He's spoken through nature. It's part of the way, through his creation, it's part of the way I became a believer. By looking at the world he created. You know, he's spoken through that. The Bible teaches that we can look up and know that there's a God. He's spoken through his word, but the highest revelation that God has given of himself is his son. The, the way we know more about God and what he is like than any other way is through his son. Y'all, through coming into a personal encounter with this risen living God. And then we come to know him. We read his word and his word is no longer ink on a page. It's his spirit. It's his living word. And we come to believe in him and know him. Oh, that's different than, than knowing about him. That's, believing, that's different than believing in, uh, in a historical person who came and, and died on a cross and given mental assent to that, sort of like you believe that Abraham Lincoln was the president. See, people believe in Jesus like that, but they don't have a relationship with Abraham Lincoln. See, you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. When you are born into his family, it's, it's different. It's not just believing in a set of facts, historical facts. It's different. You come into a personal communion with him. You know, everywhere they've ever found people, no matter how far they were cut off from civilization, they all believe in some kind of God. And they all generally have the same morality, the same things that human nature, because it's been planted in us, is what God's Word says. In Romans 1, it teaches that this knowledge of God is planted. We are born with it. And, and we believe generally that the same basic things are right and wrong. I mean, they don't find civilizations where... It's good to steal. You know, they say, oh man, he's a great guy. He stole my car. You know, <laughs> they, don't, they don't find that, that uh, civilizations where it's good to lie. You know, that they, don't, they don't find that stuff. Uh, man, he's a great guy. He broke his promise to me. See, all these kinds of things, they don't make any sense unless there's a God who's created us in his image and he sent his son. See, we can know about God. We can know there's a God, but we're born into his family through his son by trusting in his son and believing in him. Now, thirdly, we must nourish that spiritual life. Y'all, you, we, we've got to nourish that. Look in John 6, 57. It says, I live because of the living Father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. Jesus was saying that I live in such close communion with him, such awareness of his presence and awareness of his will that I depend on that from my everyday life. He says, I live like that. And he said the person who lives in that same way with, uh, in his awareness of me will live because of me. Is he that real to you? Is he someone who's living with you? Are you living with him? Or is he somebody, somebody over here 
Is it compartmentalized in your life that you've got religion over here, but you've got just your regular old life? See, it's easy to just forget God. Jesus never forgot that God was there. And, you know, we're human beings. We're not perfect. He is and was as he walked here on this earth. See, we get busy during the day, and, and you know, we can forget about God, but, see, we can come right back to him because he's with us. You know, when we're aware of him, it gives, it makes life altogether different. And the more we grow in this relationship with him and we learn to become dependent upon him. See, when we get overwhelmed with life, you know, we realize that I am connected to the God who is omnipotent. He has all the power in the world. He can do anything. He, his, his potential is unlimited. And it means I am connected to the God who is omniscient. Y'all, he knows everything. And he can see a solution to any problem that we can't see. I'm connected to the God who's omnipresent. There's nowhere I can go that he's not there. And he's every place. And, and he'll be able to be with me wherever I am. And I'm connected to the God who is sovereign. Y'all, he's the Lord over all. And there's nothing that's going to happen that doesn't come through his hands first. I'm connected to the God who is immutable. Y'all, he never changes. He's the same forever and ever. I'm connected to the God who is absolutely holy. He's always going to do what's right. Y'all, when you're aware of him, you are connected to him like that. And y'all, whatever we feed will grow. If you feed on your relationship with God... You'll grow your relationship with God. You feed on prayer. You'll grow your prayer life. You feed on generosity. You'll grow generosity in your life. You feed on kindness. You'll grow kindness. And unfortunately, the same thing is true. Uh, you, you feed on selfishness and selfishness will grow. You feed on lust. Lust will grow. You feed materialism. Materialism will grow. You feed your fears. Fear will grow. Yeah. Y'all, look at, look at Hebrews 2, 15. You know, the greatest fear that people have is death. But that's not the bad, worst thing that can happen to you when you know Him. You don't fear death. Now, we don't, that in this pandemic age, you know, we don't, we don't be stupid. You know, we don't, we don't want to be dumb and, and not do what we're asked to do and take uh, precautions and things like that, you know, and, and all, and, and be wise about anything, about our health, about life. But you don't have to live paralyzed by fear like some people are right now. Fear is overwhelming to people. But we don't have to be. Does anybody in here know what Araka Batubia, by, let me see if I can say this, Araka, Ira, Araka Batubia, Tyrophobia, arachabotyrophobia. Does anybody know what that fear is? If you do, you got too much time on your hands. <laughs> you know what that is? That's the fear of peanut butter. It's the fear, and I put crunchy and creamy so we wouldn't have a fight in here today. You know, uh, but, but y'all, that's, that's the fear. I mean, that's an irrational fear. But it's a, it's some people are afraid that they'll get peanut butter stuck to the roof of their mouth. Oh, that's an easy fear to take care of. Just don't eat peanut butter. You know, you can, you can take care of that one. But y'all, fear of death is different. You know, they ridicule the, the lieutenant governor of Texas recently because he said there's worse, worse things than dying. You know, he's a born-again Christian. He's pretty vocal about it. And he, the, the media just, oh, they just went apoplectic about that. Oh, man, he's, you know, you know how they are. But, y'all, there are worse things than dying. Y'all, yeah. when, when you've been born into the family of God, you know, you realize that, that you know, we're, we're not going to die. Jesus said you will never die. You can take his word for that. But, y'all, one of the worst things you can do is not nourish your Christian life. If you're not nourishing it, you know, that, that other stuff will take over. And, and look at this quote right here by Shane Claiborne. He says, 
Perhaps there is no, dan- no more dangerous place for a Christian than, than to be than in safety and comfort detached from the suffering of others. Amen. That's a dangerous place for a Christian to be, to be just to become self-centered and to just be wrapped up in your own little world because we got it pretty good, y'all. When we've been a Christian for a while and, and we've gotten our lives together pretty good and, you know, life is going okay and we don't have any big problems at the moment, they're coming with everybody because we go through seasons of that. But and we just get caught up in our own little world and we forget about the suffering that other people are going through and we just let it go. That's a dangerous place to be as God's people. No, we can't live like that. We can't afford to live like that. In closing, I, wanna, I just want to ask, are you still afraid of death? You know, physical death is the separation of the soul from the body. That's what physical death is. When that you leaves that body. Spiritual death is the separation of the spirit from God. See, that's why we were spiritually dead. When we are born again, the spirit of the living God comes and unites himself with our spirit. So when we die, when this, when this piece of meat that we live in, this hunk of flesh, when it dies, see, we don't die. We just change our address. We just change our place of residence. No, we don't, we don't die. And Jesus said we'd never die. See, uh, there, was a, there was a father who came running up to Jesus one time. His name was Jairus. Jairus had a little daughter who was just about to die. Every father on this planet, hopefully, knows what it's like to look at a sick child that you love with everything that you've got in you and you can't do anything about it. Every, every father knows that feeling. Jairus' daughter was just about to die. And so Jesus had compassion on him and was headed to his house to see what he could do. And of course, he knew what he could do. But on the way to his house, messengers came up to Jesus and to him and said, it's too late. You know, she's dead. There's, there's nothing can be done now. And Jesus looked at that man, Jairus, and he said, don't be afraid, just believe. Amen. And Jesus went to that household when it was hopeless, when it looked like there was nothing could be done, when it looked like it was too late. And he healed that little girl. And the point of telling that story is you may feel like it's too late, y'all. It's not too late for you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. Y'all, you, you, it's not too late for you. And I don't care what you've, I don't care what you've sinned. You know, you, you can't out God's forgiveness. His blood, the blood of his cross covered it all. Now, you don't willfully sin after you become a believer because you know you've been changed. You don't, you don't, you don't like it anymore. We get a new nature. And even if we fall into sin, we feel dirty. We don't, we don't want to live with that anymore. We're not trying to be righteous, y'all. He's made us righteous. He's changed us. But see, you, whatever you've done, it's not too late for you. It's not hopeless. So I invite you right now, just turn to him. Just believe him. That's all you've got to do. Just believe him. Just say, God, I believe you're that good. Lord, I believe that, if, if, that you love me that much. Just, just trust it. Don't, don't try to figure it out. Just trust. And that's all God is asking you to do. Now, he will grow you into becoming 
a believer, a true, a true believer. He, I mean, you're a believer the moment you commit to him. But I'm talking about he'll grow you in your Christian faith. But, but it's, it's a choice. He said, whoever will, whosoever will, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, you've, you've, got, you've got to do that. You've, you've got to believe him. He's done all, everything. you just got to believe it. You've got to receive it. It's a gift. That's all you can do with a gift is take it. So if you're visiting with us online today, go online, call our church, gracememphis.com. Call our church and, and use option four. It'll go straight to my cell phone. I'll be happy to talk with you. And we would also very much appreciate if you would give. If, if you feel led. Now, if you, don't, if you don't want to give, if that's something that you don't, you don't even want to hear, well, don't worry about it. We invite you to just listen and, and, and do whatever you want to do with that. But, but if you feel inclined, please give. You can give by clicking on the Give button at our church. You can give by text, 84321. We'd love for you to come here and give. Uh, and really more than that, we'd love to just have your presence here. But anyway, God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. So. Uh...